I've, uh, hmm. I've done a lot of things in my life I'm not, I'm not proud of. Been a lot of places I'm not proud of. But one thing I am proud of is my salvation. One thing that I am so thankful for this morning, above all else, is that when my heart takes that last beat, and I have that last breath go through my body. And as Billy Ray says, when I close the door and I go in for my last prayer, I know there will be a guardian angel come and escort me into the presence of Jesus Christ. I feel confident in that today. And I want to praise God. I am so thankful to be back at this church this morning. I am so thankful. I am so thankful to be in the house of God this morning. I missed you guys, and I thought about you all the time when I was in Alabama on vacation. Thank you for allowing me and my family to go on vacation, and thank you for allowing me to be your pastor and your friend. Um, I feel very close to you, and I feel like that I can be brutally honest and wrap it in love, and you guys still love at all times, and I think that's what, why God is truly blessing this fellowship in this house. I also want to thank my father-in-law, my hero in the faith, my spiritual father, Bobby Walker, for filling the pulpit Amen. last week. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, it's preaching time. Come on. I'm fired up. It's preaching time. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't tell you how blessed I was last week. I had uh, some God moments. I was in my computer room, and I was looking down here, and uh, I seen the parking lot filling up with cars. And I seen the, the parking lot team, the ministry team out there shaking hands and welcoming people. And... Um, when you guys were having worship, I kind of snuck down here just a little bit. I snuck down here, sneaked down here, whatever you want to call it in Kentucky. But anyway, uh, while you were worshiping and uh, the praise team, I heard y'all outside. Y'all are really sounding good, brother man. So the people on the road would most definitely hear the anointing and draw them in. You know what I'm saying? So I circled the, the building. I circled the church seven times, and I prayed for the anointing of God for the Jericho walls to fall. And, uh, and I can't tell you how proud, how thankful. I am for a church that worship and gets it on on Sundays. And no, no reservations, man. You guys, you made me proud. And I just love you and I want to say thank you for that. So it is preaching time. And I'm going to start a series today on something you probably have never heard. It's called Soul Detox. Soul Detox. How do you detox your soul? You know, we're all about detoxing our body and getting the, the poison and the, the, the things out of our body that does not need to be there. We go on these, these diets and these, these herbal diets and things for our body to cleanse our body, to get the poison out of our body, to set us up straight so we can live a healthy life. Question is, how do you detox your soul? How do you detox your soul? The definition for detox is this. It's freeing oneself from the poison in their bodies. So when you detox, what you're doing, you're freeing yourself. You're not a prisoner no more to the poison that was in your body. You're freeing yourself. So today we're going to talk about one thing that's going to be a hot topic, but it's called toxic thoughts. Toxic thoughts. So I thought about the word toxic, and, and I'm going to teach this for a minute because I, I love to preach, but if I don't lay a foundation, and if I don't get this foundation in your spirit, the next three weeks it's going to, you're going to be lost. You're going to sit there and go, and listen, if you miss one Sunday, you're going, to be, you're going to lose. You need to be here. You need to be faithful. You need to make your mind up now that every Sunday I'm going to be here because i got to know how to detox my soul. How many of y'all already know how to detox your soul? Have you ever heard this before? How do you detox your soul? Listen, the word toxic is having the effect of poison and capable of bringing death. When you talk about something toxic in your life, you're talking about something that has the effect of poison and capable of bringing death. So before I even start preaching, i got to tell you this, because here's where a lot of you are badly mistaken, and this is the word that the Lord gave me. I want to remind you, I am a spirit. Listen, listen to me. This is going to blow you all away today because you're sitting there going, No, I'm a body. No, you're not. That's your first mistake. If you're taking notes today, write this down. I am a spirit. Listen to me. I have a soul, but I live in a body. I am a spirit. Turn to your name and say, I'm a spirit. That messes people up. 
That's why the Bible says in John chapter 4, those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Because when you start telling the truth, it will release your spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul. But you live in a body. So I'm not a body. Y'all listen to this. I'm not a body that has a soul. I am a soul that lives in a body. That my body will die one day. Y'all getting this? This flesh must die. But here's what I'm praying for. I'm praying for the rapture. Wouldn't that be something? All of us in here today, we hear a big universal horn. I don't know how it's going to sound, but the whole world's going to hear it, and all next thing you know, it's going to be a bunch of clothes left behind. So if you're here left behind and you see a bunch of clothes in a chair, watch out, because there will be hell on earth. And there will be consequences. So listen to this. I am a spirit. I have a soul, but I live in a body. I, my body, I am a soul that has a body. My, my flesh will die. It will go six feet under or it will be raptured out. But watch this. As soon as my body goes down six feet under, my spirit and my soul rest in the presence of God. Watch this. This is a good word. Listen to me. People may kill your flesh, but they cannot stop your spirit. They can't stop your spirit. That's why Paul says, I die all day in my flesh, but you can't stop my spirit. You can't stop a man in his spirit. So listen, here's the thing. What is a soul? Before I go, what is a soul? <laughs> what is your soul made up of? Here's your answer. Your soul is your mind, your will, in your emotions. That is your soul. Everybody say, it's my, it's, my, it's my mind. Come on, good gracious. People on the radio are sitting there going, it's my mind. Don't let the radio out shout you. It's my mind. Come on, it's my mind, my will, and my emotions. That's your soul. That's your soul. So watch this. When we go to heaven, guess what we're going to have? 100% mind. We're going to have the will of God. We're going to be in the presence of God. And I will have emotions. Because why? That's my soul. My mind, my will, and my emotions. So I feel God. I can't imagine how much I feel Him in my flesh, how much I'm going to experience Him in my spirit. It's good stuff. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 says these words. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So as a man thinks in his what? Heart, so is he. Look at this, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. says these words, above all else. Listen to me, above all else, guard your heart. Listen to this, for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart, guard your mind. A lot of people without even knowing or realizing, they're poisoning their own spirit. You, some of you don't even realize this morning that you have toxic poison flowing through your soul and through, through your spirit. That's why you just don't detox your body to get healthier. You detox your soul to get stronger in the, in the Lord. See, Satan wants to pour poison to the river and it flow to your, to, your, to your soul. And over time, how many of y'all can agree with this? Your character has changed. Your lifestyle. Listen, you know why people are living bad lifestyles? Watch this. The devil didn't make them do it. Get that lie out of your head right now. The devil, he may tempt you, he may test you, but you have a will and you have a conscience and you can decide for yourself. So watch this. Quit blaming the devil if you're living like hell. That's right. You're doing exactly what you want to do. You're doing, watch this, if you don't want to be at church next Sunday, guess what's going to happen? You won't be at church next Sunday. If you don't want to tithe, you don't have to tithe. And God is such a man of God and a lover of people, He's not going to force Himself on you. He's not. But you're doing exactly what you want to do. And this is going to be a tough sermon. But this is going to be tough. But y'all got me? Got three. That's okay. And all of a sudden that poison's in your body and you're cussing and you're doing things you thought you would never do. Your language has changed. 
You don't have no more spiritual energy. You know why? Because you have a toxic poison in your soul that's stopping the, po and the, the, the movement of God in your life. Because see, if you've got poison in your body, it shuts your body down. If you've got poison in your soul, it will shut your soul down. Even though it's still alive, it's shut down. Y'all understand this concept? I want to lay this down for you. So, how do we identify toxic thoughts? Y'all, we want to talk about this just for a moment. How do we identify toxic thoughts? So, I'm going to give you a checklist this morning. If you're taking note, write these down. And I guarantee you, watch this. Everybody here is included today. Everybody's included today. Number one, how do, you, how do you identify toxic thoughts? Number one is this, negative thoughts. Uh, I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. Nobody paid attention to me today, so I'm not coming back. You wake up on the wrong side of the bed, not just one day, every day. You're never positive. <laughs> You're the gloom and the doom. <laughs> You're like a Christian sucking on a lemon. Always beating yourself up. Can I tell you some truth this morning? I'm not going to hang around that kind of person. I am not. If you are a negative person and you try to invite the pastor over for supper, guess what? Negative. He's not coming, and I'll tell you straight to your face today. The reason why I'm not coming is because you're a negative person. Listen to me. If you have the spirit of negative thoughts in your life, it is spiritual poison going through your life and through your soul, and guess what? It's contagious. It's contagious. Negative thoughts is toxic. It's poison. So ever how you're thinking right now, I'm sure some of you said, I'm not good enough. How many of y'all have ever said that before? Let's get involved in this service today. How many of y'all said that before? Yeah, I'm not good enough, and I'm not pretty enough, and they, they, they go on these diets and pay $25 to lose 25 pounds. Watch this. Drink water and exercise, and you'll lose 25 pounds. <laughs> and I will save you a bunch of money. Don't do like me, Tommy. Don't go to Fiesta and say, hey, you got another bowl of that cheese dip? Yeah, and my, my daughter's got me figured out. She says, Daddy, you are a human garbage disposal. There's no food wasted at the Rafferty's. None. I'm telling you, we clean the plates. But I'm telling you the truth, the honest God truth today. Listen, quit being a negative person. <laughs> Don't be a negative person. Be positive. I'm not Joel Osteen. My, my, I'm not Joe Osteen. I'm not Brian Osteen. But I will tell you this. If you have a positive thought, it creates life. You want to hang around those type of people. I don't want to hang around old gloom and doom. Man, they give you a prayer request and it's like, bam. I hardly ever hear somebody come off and say, hey, pastor, I got a prayer request, but blessed be the name of God. I'm, I've got it anyhow. They always come in with a hit list, what's wrong? Can I just be honest with you this morning? We should praise God for what's right. What's right with the people today? I'm so tired of watching CNN and ABC and NBC and watching whatever, C's, whatever you want to say. And you watch the news, and next thing you know, that dictates how you feel. Why don't you watch this? Won't you read the, the good news? Why don't you read the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, and let the good news of God get deep in your spirit. And man, when you start reading the good word, the good news, and blessed be he who, who pers who is persecuted because God said heaven is his home. Man, this is the good news. And listen, I'm being honest with you. There's going to come a time, and you can mark this down your notes. You've got to stay positive. Here's the way I look at it. Man, yes, there's going to be war. There's going to be rumors of wars. Matthew chapter 24 tells me that. But hey, I've got Coots on my side. He's out there. He's charging the battle lines. He'll take a hit for me. I'm here today because of people like him. I don't look at all the gloom and doom. It can't mess with the U.S. See, you're so blessed here today. 
We don't realize we forget about how we got here today. I thank God for Calvary. I thank God for all, all of our military. But I'm going to tell you something. It took a Savior dying on a cross for you to be here today. That's the good news. That's the good news of God. And I'll never forget it. And I hope you get, oh, if you get tired of me saying, talking about Jesus, this is the wrong church for you. We're going to talk about the big J-E-S-U-S. Because he's all we've got. So watch your thoughts. Watch what you speak. Watch what you say. And listen, boy, it's going to be a mess in here. So you start speaking negative and somebody says, uh-uh. Now listen to it. We've got too many telephone gossip. We've got too many backdoor meetings. If you ain't big enough to tell the person to their face, you don't need to say it. If you've got a problem, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'll help you real quick. If you've got a problem with somebody, you go to them. Not all of them, but to them. And when you work it out with them, it normally gets worked out. The problem is, is that people are out of order. They go to Beulah her four and no more. And Beulah her four and no more go to Bertha her eight and no more. And Bertha and her eight no more go to Roxanne and her 16. And next thing you know, you got a church gossip. Uh, y'all know it's true. How many of y'all know I'm preaching truth today? You may not like it, but it's true. It's so true. So, man, lay, I want you to lay your hand on your mind right now. Come on, it's all right. This is going to be interesting. And if you're listening by radio, pull your car off the side of the road, and I'm going to put your hands on your head. I want you to say these words. Say, God, create in me a God mind. Yeah. A God mind. Man, that's awesome. Second thing is this about how you identify toxic thoughts is, is fearful thoughts. Fearful thoughts. You're worried. Watch this. Worried. I'm going to make a song up here in just a minute. Worried. All the time it's fear that is listen to me I'm gonna help somebody here today because this is the truth quit worrying and I say right it's easy for you to say no it's not I battle it just like you do it is so easy to be worried in a time and a day that we're living in it is so easy to have fear in your life but praise be unto God, God says, I didn't give you the spirit of fear. I gave you the spirit of love and power and a sound mind. The God that is in me that is bigger than any fearful, worldful thing going on in my life. God's got it. I can't do it. How many of y'all say, I, I just can't do it? You go to the doctor and they'll diagnose you with a pimple and you'll walk out and say you got a tumor. It's the truth. You'll get an average cold and you'll start making funeral arrangements. Y'all know the old boy's telling you the truth this morning. You're afraid of the economy. You're afraid of work. You're afraid to preach the truth because of what people will say and how they'll talk. You're afraid of your, about your children going to school. I have people come to me all the time and they'll say, I'm not having kids because of the way the world is. Watch this. If God says, blessed are those who have his children, why are you allowing the world to dictate the promises of God? I'd be double dog dare anybody. You don't have to be fearful of what's going on around you. Do you believe the Bible this morning? So let me just remind you, let me quote you some promises and some scripture out of the Bible. The Bible says, as greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for you, who can be against you? Though a troop may charge me at night, my God will run them out during the day. My God is a mighty fortress in my life. He's never forsaken me. He's on time every time. Yeah, I'll praise him. He ain't going to leave me. He's not going to leave you. He's on time. Watch this. Here's the problem with America. Y'all ready? We get so in debt, we end up blaming it on God. 
We borrow and we borrow and we borrow and we borrow and we become a slave to the, to the lender. And the next thing you know, you're in financial problems. You're in bondage. You are a slave. And the next thing you know, it's God's problem that you got in debt. Listen to me. This won't work for everybody. It, it should. But if you will start saving... And putting back just a little bit. Just a little bit. And listen, don't go out and buy a stinking new car every year. You're getting debt and debt and debt. Pay the one you got. I promise you, they drive better. Yes, they, do. <laughs> they drive better. Now listen, you may be a millionaire in here. Well, if you are, we've got like 180000 on this building program. <laughs> Help us! Just tie the tenth and we're out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're out. We're out. Anyway, I don't know where that come from, but I received that in the name of Jesus Christ. I received that in the name of Jesus. But listen to me, guys. Please. Well, we're going to become a dangerous church is when we quit listening to the devil. Somebody say amen. And we start listening to the word of the Lord. And we say, God, this is what God said. When Satan comes at you like a roaring lion, all he can do is growl. He can't bite. Stand on the Word. When, when you don't feel good in your body, I take this Bible all the time and say, God, this is what you said. Lord, this is what you said. My head's hurting. Lord, my feet, I'm tired today. I have some religious people like, that boy standing on the Bible. Standing on the promises. Yeah. Yeah, standing on the Word. Maybe you ought to try it. Listen to me. Don't be fearful. Because fear, listen, I wrote this down. This is good. I don't care if y'all like it or not. Fear will turn you into a drama queen and a drama king. You will. How you doing? Well, you got an hour. Y'all are laughing because y'all know some drama queens. You know some drama kings. Fear is written all over them. They're worried about, did they get fired? Did, are they going to get hired? And Oh, did this happen? And did that happen? And this, Oh, my God, I'm tired of even talking about it. So let's go to the next point. The third one, toxic thought, is discontent thoughts. You're discontent. <laughs> no matter what you have, watch this, no matter what you have, it's never good enough. Never good enough. If, you, if you've got a, 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 a Lamborghini, you'll want... Oh, no, let me get down to Kentucky style. If you drive a Chevrolet, you'll want a Ford. I'm joking. I've done that for Mark Kessinger. <laughs> you always want... If your neighbor's got one of them zero-turning radius mowers, you'll be sitting in your living room going, My God, I've got to have a, a Dixon. And you'll even get in there and say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go to the left, and I'm going to do that and go to the right. And you'll have a good time just turning, turning, turning. And you'll be sitting there having a dream about a Dixon. But, and listen, man, if you've got a John Deere, be happy with a John Deere. Be content with what God's got you. Where God's got you at. It'll bless you. It, it'll bless you. You never, I wrote this down, you never enjoy what you have because you're always looking for the next best thing. Oh, got to have it. Got to have it. You're discontent. And listen to me. That is poison. That is poison going into your body, into your soul, into your spirit. And guys, when you start doing stuff like that, I'm telling you, when you have negative thoughts and fearful thoughts and discontent thoughts, I promise you, it's poison in your spirit. How many of you know right now I could stop preaching and that right there would say, you know what? I am poisoning my soul. I am poisoning my spirit. I've had negative thoughts. I have not been content with what God has given me. You know what I declare today and prophesy today in Jesus' name? We have Christians with the attitude of gratitude. That we have Christians say, God, thank you for my home that I have. 
Thank you for the car that I drove in to church today. God, thank you for all that you have given, the clothes on my back and the food on my table. God, I'm thankful for what you have given me. I'm grateful for what you have given me. I don't want nothing else, God. I'm blessed with whatever I've got now in my life. God, listen to me. If you're here today and you've got a dollar in your pocket, the Bible says, and according to statistics, you're a rich man. Amen. Seventy-five percent of the world don't have a dollar in their pocket right now. Well, you think about that. I've only got two. So I'm rich. Be content. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm content today. This next one I'm going to give you, and I'm done. This one right here is probably one of the biggest toxics, the biggest poison in people's bodies today in their spirit, in their souls today. It's called critical thoughts. Negative thoughts, fearful thoughts, discontent thoughts, and critical thoughts. Y'all know where I'm going, so hang on to your seat, buckle down, hold on, we're going to rock it on. Y'all ready? People will come into church and people will show up and they'll say, well, the preacher's wearing blue jeans. I'm just being honest with you this morning. Well... He preaches too long. Well, they sing too long. The chairs are blue. The floor is gray and red with black stripes. Blue carpet. Why'd they go with blue or gray carpet on the walls? They should have went with red. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Did you see her? Look at her. Just look at that. Huh? Y'all know I'm telling you truth this morning. Yeah, just look at that. Just look at them. Look what they're wearing. Now, I will tell you this. Let me give you an excerpt right here on this. If, you can't, if you're wearing a skirt and you can't bend over and touch your toes without showing everything you've got, put some clothes on. Put some clothes on. Put some clothes on. Put some clothes on. Good day. I got so sick of looking at girls all the time. You think, man, why'd you look at them? Let me just go ahead and be honest with you. Let's get down today. Girls, listen to me. I'm going to help you. We as men have something in our body called eyes. <laughs> I know that shocks y'all. <coughs> but when you come with some Daisy Dukes on, and here's how... No, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> Lord, stop me on that one. That's good. But man, when you walk in front of me, and there you are, and I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh. And then I try to go listen, and then Dan's like, did you see that? <laughs> and then I'm put in a spot. What do you do, lie? Because if I say, no, nah, honey, I didn't see that. Yes, you did. Amen. And men, the reason why y'all laughing is y'all been busted. Amen. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth. Listen, 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 I'm trying to help y'all out. Girls, watch this. I promise you, if you can't look in the mirror, you, you know what you see. Help the brothers out. Help the brother out. My head getting sore. You say, Brian, you're crazy. No, I'm truthful. And we're all shoot you straight. Everybody else will try to candy coat it. So girls, listen to me. Listen to me. Teenage girls, you don't realize what you're doing. Now, I know I'm off in left field right now, but this is a pet peeve of mine in the time the church needs to address issues like this. Listen, the reason why a lot of young ladies are getting raped today, they're showing what they got. Hey, guys, it's true. 
So young people, don't come to church with a mini on. Wear them long Pentecostal shorts and skirts, you know what I'm saying? That's right, man. Put them long things on, you know? You say, Brian, listen, when I was in church, just to ask God, the boys had to ride in one van and the girls in the other. Did I like it? No, I didn't. I wanted to ride with the girls. <laughs> but my youth pastor knew me. And then we went swimming. Guess what? Everybody had to have a, a shirt on. It was. Because my youth pastor knew me. So listen, I'm not, man, I don't, I don't, it's just truth. Please, please put some clothes on your body. Honor God with your body. If God was at this church and God was serving you Holy Communion, I promise you, you wouldn't come up here with a mini on. You'd be covered. All right, I'm done. Critical thoughts. You say, Brian, that's being critical. No, that's being fruitful. That's being fruitful. All right, here's the last question. Praise team, y'all come. Are you a hummingbird? Are you a vulture? Talking about critical thoughts. Are you a hummingbird? Are you a vulture this morning? Young... <laughs> That's a crow. <laughs> I tell you, the people by radio, man, I don't know if they'll ever come. But at least we have fun, amen? Y'all know little hummingbirds, man, they're about this big and they're, they go to nectar, man. They go to that sweet stuff. They're, they flap their wings, I don't know. Really fast. And man, they're so cute. And man, they're just so gentle. And they go up there and you don't hardly ever see them coming or whatever. But man, they, they go to sweet stuff. Are you a hummingbird this morning or, or are you a critical vulture? A vulture hangs around dead things. Every day a vulture will look for something dead. But a hummingbird always looks for the nectar. Always looks for the sweet things. That when I look at you, I may not like you, but you know what? I will honor you, and I will respect you, and I will try to bring the best out of your life. Yeah. I want to be a hummingbird. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hum, Elkhorn, hum. I don't want to be old stinking vulture going around all the time looking for dead things in the church and dead things at home and dead things in relationships and dead things and everywhere you go. Dead, 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 dead. Oh, but whatever it sounds like. <laughs> Oh, vultures, one of the ugliest birds in the world, ugly birds, big, ugly birds. And all they do is hang around dead things, Tommy. I want a hummingbird church. The church should never be a critical place. It should be a loving place. The church should be a, a restoration place, a hope-giving, loving place. And always looking for the best in people's life place. The church should be like a hospital. That we hook them up to a Holy Ghost IV. And we say, God, turn it on and show up today and show off today, God. I'm telling you all these things that I told you today. Listen to this word. If you've got negative thoughts and fearful thoughts and discontent thoughts and critical thoughts, if you're a critical person, you know what that's like? That's like Satan hooking an IV up to you, Greg, and running that line straight to the throne of hell. It's toxic. It's poison. And you must detox your soul. So here's what I'm going to tell you. Next week, you don't want to miss it. I'm going to give you the answer straight from the Word of God. How do you detox your soul? You don't want to miss this stuff. Because if you miss it, the rest of the series of sermons is not going to do no good. So be faithful to God. So let me ask you a question. I'm done. How's your thoughts this morning? Are they toxic? I ain't going to lie. Sometimes it's so easy to have a toxic thought. Y'all can act religious. You can act all holy and righteous and 
dignified and all this stuff. But I'm going to tell you the honest God's truth. It would be so easy for me to pick this church to death. It'd be so easy, Annette, to pick every little detail of this church to death. But today I declare in front of all four or five hundred people that, man, I want to be a hummingbird. Hallelujah. I want to bring the best out of this church. And I want to be, dude, I want to quit, I want to quit being critical of all the silly things in my life. It drives me crazy. Every month, the electric bill is going to come. Every month, the water bill is going to come. Every month, the house payment is going to come unless you're debt free. Every month, the car payment is going to come. You know what, guys? It's going to come. You got that. You know that. Yeah. Quit being critical. And quit being discontent. I, that word right there is sticking in my heart for some odd reason. Why not? Why? Be happy with what you got. Quit running to and fro and going in debt and being slave to the lender. That's right. And if you've got a roof over your head and food on your table and clothes on your back, <laughs> shoes on your feet, hey, blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm blessed in this house. I am so blessed in this house. Guys, I don't know if God spoke a word to you today. But some of you may have poison running through your soul right now. And you don't even realize it. So I'm calling for a church-wide detox. You may have to fast. You may have to pray. You may have to go tell somebody you're sorry. Oops, I didn't say that, did I? We don't know what I'm sorry is anymore. We think everybody owes us something. We all deserve hell in this house today. But praise be unto God, I've got a Savior named Jesus that died on the cross. And after the third day, hallelujah, he got up. That's my daddy. That's my king. That's my Lord. His name is Jesus. Stand to your feet today. Amen. So guys, here we are. Here we are. Seven, perfect and complete. Eight, new beginnings. Some of you had toxic thoughts. You got toxic running through your veins right now. You're being critical. You're discontent. Negative thoughts in your life. You're mad at the person standing beside you. I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? It's the truth. We're masters at covering up. We are. The church has become the biggest con dealer in Camelsville. That's a good word right there. Because we, we think because we come to church and put a check mark beside our name, we've done our part. Church has just begun. So the question is this. Negative thoughts. I didn't pass that one. Come on. I didn't pass that one. What was the other one I said? Fearful. I didn't pass that one. Discontent. Always wanting and wanting and wanting and wanting. I didn't pass that one either. Uh oh. Critical. I'll let y'all answer that one. I didn't pass that one either. Because I can be so critical when I'm so blessed. Bring out the best in that person sitting beside you. It goes a long way. And it makes making up a whole lot better too. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I've delivered the mail. I've done exactly what you told me to do. And Lord, I pray today... I, I, I come against, oh, fearful thoughts. And I come against, oh, discontent thoughts. And, Lord, I come against, oh, critical thoughts. And, Lord, I, I, I come against all these things. So, Lord, today, I pray that you bless this church, bless our guests, and may we worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys.
If you need a Savior, you come. If you want to join this church, you come. If there's anything going on in your life, man, you're sitting there going, man, if I come to that altar, that means I got stuff going on in my life. Watch this. Yeah. Yeah. Every time in the Bible, God called for a public invitation. Read it. All through the Bible, he says, why y'all give altar calls? How about this? Because Jesus did. How come y'all get two? Because we we need it. So my question is this, what are y'all waiting for? Negative, fearful, discontent, critical thoughts. So I guess what I'm asking is how many of y'all need a, a Savior today? So y'all come if God's dealing with you. Come on. Come on. Say, Brian, I, I can't. Come. Come on. Critical, critical, critical. Come on. I don't need it. Oh, yes, you do. I'm okay today. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. Because I guarantee you, one of these points hits somebody in this house today. So you come if God's dealing with you. Come on. Come on. Come on. No more negative thoughts. No more discontent thoughts. I got it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I've been critical. Well, come on. It's all right. You say, I'm waiting for the praise band. He's up here. Come on. Father God, I know you're working. Satan, we bind you by the authority of God. You have lied to these people and myself for too long. And Lord, I pray today, oh Lord Jesus, that you'll release the anointing of God in this house. I pray, God, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that today, God, something great will happen. I pray today, God, that sin will be confessed. Lord, we will detox our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. I pray today, God, that this altar will be filled with your people, Lord, who's needing a closer walk with you. I pray to God, believing that something special is birthing in this house right now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.